Hello, and welcome back to the Basement Home Theater build. This video is a progress update of a lot of little items that I've been working on recently. I also started putting together the Echo Gear AV rack, which we will see later in this video. As you can see, the HVAC return vent and two soffit supply vents have been installed after they were previously painted black. These are the 4-inch Wi-Fi lights from Lou Mary that I purchased from Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below. The bezels were also painted black in a previous video, as the only option they came in was white. I'm hoping to do a separate video on these lights, so stay tuned for that. These are the SVS SoundPath subwoofer RCA cables. The reason for three cables is because I will be running a mini DSP 2x4 HD in order to really dial in the bass response from my two PB1000 Pro subwoofers. The short cable will eventually go from the Denon AVR to the mini DSP, which will then have two outputs that go to the subwoofers. Keep in mind when installing these that they are directional cables. There are arrows that show the direction of travel, so make sure you get them hooked up in the right direction. These cables have a really nice feel to them. I'm really impressed with the build quality and overall look that they have. Once again, keep an eye on the direction arrows on the cables. You can clearly see that this would be the wrong end of the cable that connects to the subwoofer. And there we go. That looks much better. To get the cables from the cavity to the AV rack, I chose a drill bit just slightly larger than the cables themselves. After drilling a few holes and cleaning up the mess, the cables now ran to the exterior of the cavity and right to the AV rack. Now that the subwoofer cables were ran, it's time to close up the cavity and get AV rack put together. After securing the base stand and making sure it was level, the Echo Gear 20U AV rack was placed on top, leveled, and secured as well. I have a separate video on this rack, and the purchase link from Amazon is in the description. Since this is an open frame rack, I wanted a top shelf. I removed the top brace that came with the rack, placed one of the included shelves all the way at the top, and put the top brace back on before tightening everything down. It turned out really well and should work perfectly. Next I installed the power management, which is the Panamax MR4300. It has two banks of outlets on the back, comes with the option to be rack mounted, and has two lights on the front that have several levels of brightness and can be rotated. I'm not too fond of the color of these lights though as they are fairly yellow in color. Maybe there's a way to change them out, but I haven't researched that yet. There is also an outlet and USB power port on the front, which is nice to have. The middle has a digital display that shows the incoming voltage levels so you can monitor for fluctuations, etc. 
And yes, I removed those rubber feet after I got it rack mounted. Next to go into the rack is an Onkyo HTR410 receiver. I picked this up locally on Craigslist for 50 bucks. Since it's an 8 ohm receiver with 100 watts per channel, this should be perfect to run my 6 bass shakers. I will be using the left, right, and center channels on this receiver, and each channel will have 2 bass shakers on them for 50 watts each at 8 ohms. I also double checked to make sure this receiver is compatible with a Harmony Elite remote setup, and it is. Here I am installing the banana plugs on all nine total channels of the home theater, which is five for the base layer and four Atmos overhead speakers. Sewell is the brand I went with, and they worked really well for me. After stripping back some of the wire insulation, then pulling it down around the banana plug and screwing the top piece back on to lock everything in place, you're good to go. Now comes the Denon AVR X4700H receiver. This is the main brains of my home theater. I won't go into all the details of this AVR as I'll hopefully be doing a separate video on this AVR soon. Not pictured is also the AC Infinity exhaust fan that installs directly on top of the Denon AVR. This is a smart fan that comes on to remove heat and exhaust it away to keep your AVR nice and cool. It has three total fans and also comes in front and rear exhaust configurations. Included with the Denon 4700 AVR were these label stickers. Each sticker color coordinated to the back of the receiver, making it super easy to label and connect the speaker wires to the correct location on the back of the AVR. Finally, we have the Panasonic DP UB820 4K player. I found this slightly used online and it was too good of a deal to pass up. This is the 4K player that I wanted to get anyways for my home theater, so finding it used was a nice savings. And that's all for this video. Lots more to come. Please consider subscribing and liking this video if you found it helpful. Please comment below with any questions you may have. Links to most all products that I have in my system are in the description. We'll see you in the next one.